Okay. Um, in the last, I'm going to say again, 15 years, but it's gotten worse in the last eight years. So there's been all this talk about, oh, he changed after his brain injury. There wasn't a brain injury. Glasgow Coma Scale 13 is not a brain injury. It's just knocked out unconscious. There was no change except damage to my left eye and chronic migraines. Now, this story that was made up started in 2008 after I met Giovanni. So I met Giovanni Consalvo um, in August 2008. So what people have said, oh, he speaks Italian, he speaks Lebanese, and he speaks French now after the brain injury. No, I actually don't. I spoke it better before. So I spoke French back in 1992, 1993. Um, I learned Italian, started learning Italian in 1995, um, which you can actually see the five paintings that I did for my art major in 1995. Um, I did grow up in an ethnic school, which was St. Aidan's in Rudy Hill. Latin was one of the first things that was taught. And it was, and I can back every single statement I've made up when I've said, I haven't changed, but you're financially disadvantaged me and you're deliberately stopping me from returning to work. So George Jacobs, Giovanni Consalvo, my mother, Carol, they've all jumped on to my, you know, well, I was mugged after work. It wasn't as bad as what the last eight years have been. And that's what I keep saying. The last eight years is worse than being mugged and away home from work and the injuries I had to recover from. There was no change. Then this whole thing about the beard. Um, there's a photo of me in 2005 when I'm off work on holidays and I've got a beard every time. And I, I would, if I could, if I look through my documents, I'm sure I will find a counselling from work at Star Casino about me having a beard. When I went for my interview in the year 2000, I can't think of the um, Egyptian lady who actually did my interview, but she said, oh, look, you know, as much as she likes a beard, you've got to cut it off for the um, host job. There's all these bullshit stories made up and the saying I've changed and now I'm, I'm, you know, into Islam. Can I just say one thing? My dad, the Fleming side of the family, so you've got my cousin Fiona and um, Nathan and like, Meredith, all of them, they always thought I wasn't um, accepting of Islam enough. And it's like, no, that's not true. I am. because And that's because I'm a Roman Catholic. I'm born and raised Roman Catholic. My mother's side of making up stories going, oh, now he wants to be Islam. It's like, wait a minute. No. Get together because he's both set up as a thing. Stop lying about me. And it's been a continuous lie since I was mugged after work. And I'm the only one paying the damage for it. And I'm going to remind everybody that it's fraud. So then my mother's gone and asked all these people from where she lives to make statements about me. They don't know me. So I moved back home to Sydney in 1995. I only passed through twice after then. She's asked people who don't actually know me. She actually asked people, um, so back in 2013, my mother um, called me into this, it, some guy that was a cook in the, this Freemason nursing home that her second ex-husband used to work at. And she said, oh, he remembers you. And I walked out back to see my grandmother and I'm like, he's talking about Daniel Rackley. And mum's like, oh, he doesn't remember. He's had a brain injury. Oh, well done, Carol. Another performance like when you fainted after Denny died. No one gives a shit about your performances anymore. You women, my mother, my mother's sister, Mary Ann, a lot of them have just continuously rolled over getting away with lying and committing fraud. This bullshit. So there's been crap where they've said, oh, he always came here for Christmas. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. Christmas was always in Blacktown at Kerry Roads at, at Nantes until 2004 when they were whinging about it because we, we never had Christmas. Like, mum moved in April 1989, but the family didn't. The family was still all in Sydney. We Everything was spent back home in Sydney. Every holiday, every second weekend, the only holiday that was spent outside of Sydney was October. We were always back home in Sydney. So they've got it wrong. And I'm pissed off about this. So it was always there. But in 1999, I was working. And the only one that I wasn't was the year 2000. I had off. But the year 2000, I went to, hang on, uh, year 2000, I went to Dad's. Or, uh, hang on. No, year 2000, I went to Dad's. So during the day, the year 2000, um, God, Rebecca's first daughter, my cousin Rebecca LeMay, her first daughter, Jessica, would have been a baby. That was the last one, the last Christmas we had with Aunty Sandra dad's older sister and that was i spent that on the central coast so these lies that mum makes up it's not true i've spent christmas so the only christmas i've had off 
where I was in Ross to work in the last 20 odd years or whatever, um, before, oh, before I was mugged, I spent with my father, Mark Fleming, on the Central Coast. And any time I ever had during the day, including Christmas 2003, I spent on the Central Coast at my dad's, not with my mother. So stop listening to my lying piece of shit mother. 2003, I had the day off, but I had to work Christmas night. Okay, I spent that at dad's on the Central Coast. Actually, Joey Menor came up with me. I spent it at Empire Bay with my cousins, Brooke, Rebecca, my younger sister, Sky Sheridan Fleming was there. I barely ever was with my mother's family. So they've manipulated this situation in the last, well, not just eight years. There's been a lot of manipulation since I was mugged and it's prevented me from going back to my job, but that's not from anything I've done. Because here I am saying for years, that's not true. George Jacobs, that's not true. What you were told about me isn't true, but you're not listening to me. So what's the point? This has gone on since 2008. So we're not just talking about the last eight years now. And all my money and assets and belongings and car, I already have. There's been brought up about having a sports car. Yes, yeah, so what? I've always had sports cars. Christ, but the first car I looked at when I was 17 years of age, when... I was in Blacktown looking for the trading post. I was looking at Alfa Romeo's and Pop said, well, actually, no. Mum said, oh, Dad, he wants to get a sports car. Mum chucked a shit attack. Pop was okay with it before Mum chucked a shit attack because she wanted her way, like the control freak, narcissistic piece of trash that Carol is and all these people that support her. She wanted her way, okay? So Pop said, no, your premiums are going to be up. Your insurance will be for the roof. Wait till you're 21, then get a sports car. There's no point getting a sports car now. You're a teenager. So I waited till I was 21, then I got a sports car. So ever since I was 21, I've had nothing but sports cars, high performance sports cars, imported cars, racing cars, um, and so forth. That's all I've ever had. That's all I've ever driven. You know, so this is crap. The other bullshit about me trying to look ethnic. No, I look like a Fleming. I look like my dad's side. I've always looked like my dad's side. I've always had dark skin. I've always had one eyebrow, except I've had it done to have two because I used to have one complete eyebrow and I had laser so I could have two eyebrows. I've always had near black hair. My hair has always been frizzy. I've never curled it. So stop listening to Carol because she's lying. I've always straightened my hair. I would get up of a morning. I've ha had a coarse brush. I'll put baby oil, brew cream, hair gel, brush it down straight. Just get this brush, just completely brush it down straight, then hairspray it. And it would just sit straight. It's not naturally straight. It never has been naturally straight. It's always since I grew up from being a baby toddler, being frizzy, wavy hair, just like Mark Fleming's, just like my grandfather Stanley Fleming, just like other cousins. The only time my hair ever looked shit in my life when Carol, with her narcissistic bullshit nature, after she moved from Sydney, so I wasn't around my dad anymore, she got worse. As soon as my dad and my grandparents weren't near Carol to keep her in line, she got worse. She used the horse's thinning, uh, what is it? It's a comb. So it's a comb that you use to thin the horse's mane out with. She cut my hair with it once and just completely thinned it out. It was like shit ass. That's what she was. She, My mother Carol got worse when she was away from her parents and her parents couldn't pull her in line and say, she's lying, don't listen to her. And when my father wasn't there. When my mother ran away from Sydney with her second husband, she got worse because she was with her second husband and the deadbeat she hangs around. Then this is nothing but lies. Now, no magistrate is going to stand there ever and say, well, why didn't you tell us? Look what I've just done for the last eight years. So in the last eight years, I've said continuously, that information is not true. No one's listened to me um, at all in two countries for eight years. But I'm sitting back saying, yeah, but it's not true. I told you that's not true, but you're not listening to me. So that just shows what I've put up with since 2008. Since 2008, I have put up with this. And that just shows you. So no one can turn around and say, well, we did it. No, no insurance, the casino, no one is going to sit back and say, Justin didn't tell us because Justin did tell you. And the last eight years shows that you don't listen to Justin. You listen to Giovanni, you listen to Carol, you listen to Amanda, you listen to everybody else. But you're not listening to Justin. This has been since I was mugged on my way home from work. And it's been a continuous, a continuous problem since 2008. Continuously, where I'm there saying, that's not true. I wasn't at home all day. I went back to my studies. 
You're not listening to me, George Jacobs. Again, I wasn't even in the country in 2013. Again, you're not listening. You're listening to other people, but you don't want to take the truth from me. What can I do? I'm not in charge of my workers' comp, which is what was going on from when I was mugged after work and that it was a 10, uh, 10 years part salary payment. No one listened to me. Not even the solicitor would end up taking my cause. And I'm saying, can we? Can you tell me what's going on? No one tells me what's going on. No one's listening to me. But you're listening to Giovanni, who I only just met in August 2008. I'd like to know why. He doesn't even know me. You listen to people who have actually, what, passed through my life briefly. Those people that only knew me less than six months that have been listened to. They've been fuck buddy flings that have been listened to. There have been people I've had nothing to do with since 2003, who I only met in 2002, that have been listened to. There have been people that I briefly met in a coffee shop in late 2004 and had nothing to do with since July 2005 that have been listened to. And the only person that hasn't been listened to is myself. There was things where uh, this Deb Mears started bringing up shit. She's like, I always thought, you know, can you imagine you always had short hair? I've never had short hair in my life. There's been one period of time I had short hair and I had really bad eczema from my scalp. So in the year 2000, I, sh I cut it off. I did a um, Caesar haircut. That was it. Because I got bad eczema. God, if my grandparents, Reg and Lola, were alive, they'd better say, yeah. God, they were at Dr. Codrys all the time in... Um, uh, where was he? Not Castle Hill. Um, oh, anyway, the area where Marion got married. Um, Quakers Hill. Dr. Cor my grandfather's doctor, Dr. Quadbury, in Quakers Hill. That was the other time getting me cream for me. I had a massive breakout in eczema through my scalp. And then um, one of the family members would joke around and said, Oh, Reg, maybe it's he's allergic to pigeons, the racing pigeons. Like, that's the only reason why I cut my hair off short because the creams I have to use for my scalp were just making my hair turn like jello. And I've said this before, I said the um, compounding creams, so the, the really severe creams that you use on your skin when you've got bad eczema and psoriasis, um, they practically bleach your hair, they make it go like jello. It's like really, you know, imagine it takes layers of skin off, so imagine what it does to your hair follicles. Um, so yeah, no, this is fucking ridiculous. And this crap from the Tamworth and New England people, they don't know me. And I've said this before, so oh, when did you know me? April 1989 until 1995, barely. Because I barely socialized with you guys because we're back home in Sydney all the time. So what do you know? And that's why idiots from that Freemason nursing home, they were talking about Daniel Rackley, um, Mark Rackley's son, my mother's second husband's ex-second husband and his son. And I'll tell you how, some idiot when she talked, Brought me into the kitchen. This cook said, oh, he remembers you. And it's like, I'm walking out going, remembers me. He's talking about some teenager. You separated with your second husband in 1994. I barely had anything to do with your second husband. Why would I hang around here waiting for your second husband to finish work when I've got a license? Why would I hang around Mark Rackley, your ex-second husband who I can't stand? Doesn't make any sense for me to be hanging around at his work, picking him up and driving him or whatever. They're not talking about me. They're talking about his son, Daniel Rackley. And they were. And Carol was just milking it and fucking milking it. I'm the one paying the damage. I already had an investment property. I already had my money. I already had over 140000 in the bank before this shit went on. I already had expensive furniture, assets, belongings, jewelry, every item. And these entitled disability organizations and people that keep going, was he like this before his brain injury? You want to fucking ask me. Because I haven't been asked since 2008. Because yeah, I was. Always. I never fucking changed. You lost my job. You financially disadvantaged me. You destroyed my life because you scammers wanted to jump on top of what? The fact that my mother trying to scam against what, what she wants. Oh, I'll move to Tamworth. Why would I move to Tamworth? You're the one that ran away from Sydney. You ran away from Sydney. Like, my dad's 45 minutes away. Why would I go where my fuckwit deadbeat loser of a fucking piece of shit mother that should have been arrested in the 90s lives? Seriously, New South Wales police don't do their job very well. Why would I go anywhere fucking near that scumbag? Let's go back to Christmas. Until I was mugged after work, that was the first Christmas I ever travelled for. Like I said, Christmas was still at Nans in Kerry Road, Blacktown, right up until the last one. 
was, well, the last one was meant to be 2004, but I wasn't even going to be there for it. I was having Christmas in the city with Jackie Phillips because I was working Christmas Day. And I did. I was living in St. Leonard's then. And Nan said, oh, would you mind if I... Because Mary Ann's whinge. Mary Ann and Christy... Mary Ann Mahowski and fucking Christy Childs was whinging. They want to have Christmas. Sure. I don't care. I really don't, couldn't care less if I have Christmas with them or not. So I had Christmas in the city. I was always working. I used to roster myself on. The first time I had to fucking affiliate with those bitches was after I was mugged. That's why. Because I had no excuse. They're like, oh, there's no excuse. You have to travel. It wasn't because I wanted to. I can't fucking stand them. They've manipulated people since I was mugged. And Giovanni, well, he wants to stand back and say, oh, I didn't know your mother manipulated me. Oh, get fucked. You fucking did. Because I stood there so many times and said, that's bullshit. Listen to me. I'm sick of this. If I never met him, it wouldn't have happened, this shit. Because John, my ex-partner, wouldn't let that happen. John Gabino. He used to pick my mother up and throw her out. She's a fucking dog. She's a fucking dog. And people that affiliate with, it, with her are nothing but pieces of shit like her. Seriously. The fucking crap. And the fucking lies from her and her fucking sisters. You want to know what I was like, you ask me. I've never changed. Ever. I got mugged. I got damage to my left eye. Uh, my back got exacerbated and chronic migraines. I had to push through that and recover. I was given time to recover. And then suddenly you've got Carol making up bullshit stories. And she even made John Cabino write it in a statement. I was like, Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde. And I said, John, put it down. Put it down because if it turns back around and this goes in front of a magistrate, I'll turn around and say, they're Carol's words. Carol's played her game since I was mugged after work. And I'll tell you something else as well. And John can confirm this. John Cabino... Um, when I was, I, I came home the same day from St. Vincent's because I remember everything. I'm, I'm sleeping. Um, you know what, Carol, well, my nan was there, Lola. Carol turns around and says, oh, come on, mum, let's go see Margaret Boot play. And nan said, no, I'm not leaving just inside. Mum turned around and said, oh, he won't remember if you're here or not. Ask John Cabino, she fucking did. She's a piece of shit, low life, and these people that support Carol need a good fucking kick in the head. Why would you support that bitch? She's been lying for years. She should be in fucking jail. Why would you support Giovanni? He's been lying since I met him. There's no truth in anything that's been said since 2008. And here I am turning around in 2015 going, hang on a minute. That's my signature on a document. On a document. I never signed it. What the hell has gone on? I knew what happened in 2013 because George Jacobs told me he was, oh, he raised red flags and it was so upset and worried about me that he contacted the crisis group. It's like, why? I wasn't in the country. Oh, well, Giovanni had to have March 2013 off work because you weren't leaving the apartment and you were at home depressed and suicidal. I'm like, no, I wasn't. I'd already planned to go to America. I planned to go to America in 2012, but I was moving, so I couldn't. I said, no, I wasn't. I've been applying for a green card since, you know, my studies in design. Like, you don't believe me, but I've told you, George Jacobs, that I've been studying and... I'm telling you that Giovanni's bullshitting you, but you don't believe me. So what can I do? Seriously, what can I do when you don't believe me? But this is what's gone on my entire workers' comp. So no magistrate's going to sit there and say, well, hang on, Justin, you didn't. No, Justin did. And Justin's continuously said the truth since 2015 when he found out just how bad he was lied about. And he turned around and said, hang on a minute. None of that's true. What's gone on? None of that's true. Can you start listening to me? You know, no one did except the lies got worse in the last eight years. More people got involved, more people, more groups, more organizations, and the lies got worse to cover up the existing lies that went on since 2008. So no one would stand there and say, Justin didn't tell us bullshit. There's no legal repercussions coming back onto me. My money and I assets, I had a shitload more before I met Giovanni. You want to reimburse every last cent, including loss of salary. And I fucking mean it. More damage has been done to my life in the last eight years than anything in the past before 2015. And this has all been so some scumbags could cover up their bullshit lies and stories about me.